it is wet, cold, miserable, it's raining on a Friday in late May. We're off to the dentist. So, I have to excuse the voice because I'm all numb. I can't feel the lower half of my face. So, we're in getting some deep cleaning done. I needed some stitches. And yeah, now I can't move or feel my face. Um, which is hilarious because um, I was meant to film a video later on oh, thanks so much man I, I appreciate it perfect timing got here trains here so i was meant to go to dinner later on this evening as well and i've had to cancel that because i can't eat I can finally feel my face again. I've eaten, but even then it was liquids. The reason I was in the dentist today and the, the reason my whole face was numbed is we're redoing my veneers, my composite bonding. So you would have saw on this channel, if you've been following it for a while, if you've been following my, following my socials for a while, I still can't fully talk. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you would have saw that, was it last year? Year before, that I got my top six um, teeth done with composite bonding. So what composite bonding is, it's not like a veneer that most people think. So there's a difference between a veneer and a crown. Crown is the procedure, veneer is the material. So like if you imagine like this is your tooth, and with a crown they file the tooth down and then put the material on top like the veneer or zirconium or whatever it is they put it on top light you need to stay on um, and there's a composite bonding they don't file down the tooth what is with the light but with composite bonding what they do is I explain this in the other video but I'll explain it now basically what they do is they basically just like um, score the front of the tooth so then the adhesive has something to stick onto and then they stick the veneer or the composite or whatever else on the front. That's what I had. So my full natural tooth is still in there behind there, the full thing. But there's like a medical grade composite on top. We're swapping that out for a porcelain veneer. Um, but today I had to go in for like a deep cleaning and a consult and everything else like that. So that's why I was all numbed up. Um, getting some like dental hygiene done before getting cosmetic dentistry done so that's why I was in the dentist so we're doing all this in Seapoint Clinic and um, they're not paying me to make this video but it is on a collaborative basis that content will come down the line but just for full dis disclosure anyways I fell asleep on this here sofa this is the the kind of bigger armchair that you see in the back of the let's get dressed videos i was watching a michael schumacher documentary and i fell asleep and um, and then i woke up and i had soup because i can't really eat solids while my mouth is like this in case i bite my tongue or the inside of my cheek and it's painful anyways i put a question box up on my instagram so i'm going to answer them now so the greatest Mexican that ever lived asked, do you get your watches online or in person? Uh, both, but mostly online. So Earnshaw send me plenty of watches. Like I'm friends with the guys who own that company. So they send me plenty of watches. 
um, this like Seiko 5 that I'm wearing here and um, a lad in Germany who follows me and um, he does like Seiko mods he made me that and sent it to me the Cartier and the Patek for example bought in store Ake Yab um, sorry if I butcher these names by the way also uh, do you still have your day job sorry if I missed an update where you mentioned it so no I quit my day job I think about a year ago, it was around this time last year, around Kentucky Derby, around Kentucky Derby time last year, I quit the day job. Um, because I think I explained it in another video, but basically the social media stuff and the opportunities I was getting from that was taking away from the day job. And my day job was suffering. And it's not fair for the people that are paying me a salary to be paying me a salary where I'm not doing the work to a standard that's good enough uh, for both myself, the standards that I hold myself to, but also the standards that the company hold themselves to. So I had to make a decision that I either start turning down opportunities that I get from social media and focus on my day job or quit my day job and take the opportunities and give social media a bash and see if it works. Obviously, I quit my day job and it's working because I get plenty of opportunities and I'm very, very, very privilege to live the life that I do. Internally rotated. Um, ask, where do you get your high-waisted trousers and suits? So most of them, especially recently, are custom made. They're by a brand called Grant and Gable. So my pink suit uh, that you see me wear, the green chinos I wore in the other video, the navy chinos, the light gray trousers, and um, the navy pinstripe three-piece suit. All Grant and Gable. They will be launched very soon. In like, I think they're launching pre orders in like two weeks or something like that, like June. I think they're launching pre orders in June. Um, Kit Blake is the other company that do high rise trousers. Again, I'm friends with the guys who own that company. They send me some trousers. They've never paid me to promote their brand. They're just a good quality product that I tend to wear all the time. SH Savish says, can you dress as an English teacher? I'm not really sure what that means. Joshua Burcrombie says, I'm a seven foot guy. I struggle with clothes and ideas on comfortable shirts. If you're seven foot tall, it's gonna be very difficult for you to shop and get it in proportions because generally with ready to wear brands, what happens is as things are made for taller people they generally make them wider too they just they just assume that everybody that is tall is also really broad and um, so essentially the garment gets bigger in all of its proportions so in length and width which is not always the case you could be seven foot tall and, and still be quite lean or still be quite skinny or whatever so it's very very difficult and um, Trouser lengths are going to be an issue and short lengths and widths are going to be an issue. I already mentioned Grant and Gable. They do a made to order and a full made to measure service. So that's an option. There's brands like Hawker Tea that are an option that are quite affordable, suit supply, uh, things like that. Basically anywhere that is relatively affordable that you get to like custom make the measurements that's gonna be your best bet. A proper cloth or brisk or some like online custom shirting companies that are within your budget, reasonably priced, but you get to put in custom measurements, that's gonna be your best bet just because you're so tall. There asks, aside from social media, what do you do for a living? So social media is most of what I do. I'd say it's probably like 60, 40 at the minute. So social media and then I own a clothing company part of the clothing company. Sleeve with Chloe says, I hope you're doing good after your procedure today. Um, oh, Chloe is the, Chloe works in the, um, in the clinic. So yeah, Chloe, I'm doing fine as you can see by this. Brem says, someday would you reply to me? Brem, today is that day. 2112 Josh 2112 says you put some thoughts in their outfits all the time or sometimes they're just improvised 
Yes and no, kind of. Like if I'm going somewhere specific, doing something specific, if there's a dress code in mind, we'll know that in advance. Like our calendar is like pretty jammed all of the time. So we generally know what I'm doing and where I'm gonna be on any given day or days that I'm not doing anything at all. And um, my wardrobe is very refined. Like if you watch a lot of the videos, you'll see it's kind of very similar style. Sometimes it gets a, like more casual and sometimes it gets more formal. If you pay really close attention, you'll notice it gets more formal in the colder winter months and then gets more casual in the warmer summer months because for me, the weather dictates my outfits more than anything else other than a dress code if I'm going somewhere that's like black tie I'm wearing a tuxedo regardless of the weather right but for the most part on a normal average day to day the weather dictates what I wear Brian Robinson knee tattoos painful yes my knee tattoo is the only tattoo that I have that I've ever tapped out of rip says best place to shop starting off trying to buy similar clothes to you and um, that grand and gable brand that i keep mentioning i've meant this is the third time i've mentioned it like they're super affordable as i said they've not launched yet they're lo they're going to launch pre-orders in a few weeks i think but their chinos are retailing at 90 quid and they're incredible so like they're high rise you can get them with pleats you can get them without pleats they have the side tabs and um, they're so good they'll have trousers and chinos for like under 100 euro like 90 90 euros i think they're retail no matter which is about 110 120 dollars it's very good grave says favorite thing about your family members love your content hope you're doing well i am doing well and thank you for the kind words favorite thing about my family members is we're super close me and my sister are like best friends you see ethan in in the videos um, I have a great relationship with like Ethan and my other nephews and my niece. I have a great relationship with my two younger brothers. Great relationship with my parents. Like we're we're all super close, and that's it's my favorite thing. Hey, look, it's Jamie. Says when will you return to America? I'll be returning to America on July first. What was your style when you were younger? So when I was like young, I'd say up until I was like. 17, 18, 19. My style was basically my school uniform and then sportswear because all I did was play sports. Um, and before you ask what sports, football, soccer for the Americans. Um, so my school uniform and then sportswear because that's basically all I'd done when I was not in school, I was outside playing sports. Then when I stopped playing sports in like my late teens, early twenties, um, I got into kind of the the local music scene. So I suppose like kind of like a hard rock, like um, I suppose kind of like a hardcore emo kid kind of thing, like short, skinny jeans, Vans, all that sort of thing. And then I grew out of that, like fairly kind of I wouldn't say quickly, but because I mean still got nose person still covered in tattoos. Um. But I started to, once I got into kind of the working world, so I started working my first ever day job at like 16. Um, so you're kind of still in school. So then instead of going from school uniform to sportswear, you're from school uniform to like work uniform. My first ever job was in a Tesco, which is like a supermarket. I was packing out like frozen peas for like seven euros an hour and it was absolutely miserable. Um, but it's, I'd say I start dressing the way I dress now in like my early 20s probably about 21 ish yeah about 2021 20, i started to dress how i dress now and then it just kind of like re like evolved and re refined over the past like decade ah oh, i'm assuming that's how you say your name yeah no, that's how it's spelled and i'm irish so i'm just going to assume it's cahill your psoriasis has cleared up how um so i think i spoke about this before maybe it was on instagram or maybe it was in a youtube video <laughs> i can't really remember um but a good skin a good skincare routine so um i use a couple of products from a range from boots called number seven so there's like a cleanser 
it doesn't have to be from that range it can be from any range but i use a cleanser i use a skin balance and serum none of this really has anything to do with psoriasis but it kind of treats some of the um symptoms of psoriasis like when you have a flare-up and the ones i'm mentioning right now are face specific so a cleanser a skin balance and serum a psoriasis treatment cream which is non steroid based i do not use any topical steroid creams on my skin at all um, and then i use a moisturizer uh, which again is face specific when i have a flare-up on my body or when i did have a flare-up and some of you guys that follow me for a while would have seen how bad it was um, i used cerave so it comes in like a white tub it's a really really good quality moisturizer um, and it's absolutely brilliant that will only kind of combat the top layer symptoms so the red the itchy flaky patches on your body it won't actually do anything beyond that because it's an autoimmune disease something has triggered your immune system and this is your body's response to it um for me it came with like acceptance and just getting on with my day and just not giving a fuck if that makes sense and it's a really really hard thing to do and it's really really tough because lots of people look at you weird lots of people are quite judgmental people pass comments like the easiest way to to kind of boil it down for me on a personal level is like i had that big flare up right as i was like in the bulk of making the let's get dressed videos like in their very early age when i was doing them every single day like during lockdown and stuff and they were just starting to gather momentum like well on tiktok not on instagram it was just starting to gather momentum on my tiktok was like just starting to really grow and the videos were starting to get lots of views and i thought to myself i can't just stop making these videos because my skin is bad because i don't know when it'll be better again it could be days could be weeks could be months could be a year and um, so i'm not gonna go that amount of time without like making content without living my normal daily life so i just said fuck it and i just continued and then when people asked about it i spoke about it like and it was really tough because i had a flare-up right when there was like the monkey pox thing was like going around so i would get comments from people all the time like bro has monkey pox when i don't psoriasis which is probably quite similar to like when people had psoriasis years and years and years and years and years ago and people thought that they were lepers people thought they had leprosy and they <laughs> they basically put people with psoriasis in isolation with people with leprosy which is highly contagious so like that's kind of fucked up for me it's like a good mental health space and a good skincare routine that's all it boils down to i kind of just basically said fuck it oh shit bro i have this works out perfect i'm gonna be in london on june 2nd because i'm going to paris the next day with a brand um yeah man that would be sick come to manchester and london <laughs> uh, i mean potentially but um now do it like all oh, i'll be in london on the second anyways because i'm going to paris the next day from london so london is 100 percent down it's 100 percent happening sorry it's uh, my friend bryce he's um teddy swims photographer and we're talking about me going to hang with the boys again because they've i think they fly to australia before they go back to america so we'll all hang in america when they're finished tour and i'll already be out there um but we're just trying to like liaise our schedules so we can hang out together now while they're so close and um, because obviously i don't get to see them that often because they tour so um that's that was that's the plan that was that was that was bryce geo asks classic negroni or french negroni classic or i don't mind spagliato 
which is when you take the gin out and you put Prosecco in it instead. Damien Voice says, Polo with a blazer, yes or no? Absolutely. Ellie Enquet, Ellie Enquet says, so you still have your upper incisors built into fangs. I do. You can see them here and here. Whether we keep the fangs, we don't know yet. We'll see. Adrian asks, what makes Damien happy? Um, Adrian, firstly, I know you watch these vlogs with your family, so hello to all. Um, I appreciate your support so much on all of my socials. Dude, you are an absolute legend. Um, what makes me happy? Spending time with my family, spending time with my friends, getting to do new things for the first time, getting to see new places for the first time is one of my favorite things on the planet. Um, I like doing anything that makes me forget my phone. So if I'm with someone or I'm somewhere and I completely forget about my phone, I forget to pick it up, I forget to look at it, anything like that, that makes me happy. <coughs> Wooden Sword Boy says, how does it feel to be so cool? I wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm like the least coolest person. Dustin asks, which was your first tattoo and where did you get it? So it was this nautical star under my watch here. And I got it when I was 15. Leanne? Liani? Leanne. Uh, that's an interesting way of spelling your name. Um, where are you living in Dublin now? If Dublin, why did you move back? So I am living in Dublin. I'm kind of between Dublin, London. I'll be in America in July um, for about a month or so. So I'm kind of like a, a little all over the place. Um, I'm in Paris in early June for like two days and then I'm in Florence for like a week. And then I think I'm in France for back in France in like Nice for maybe two days and then I go to America. So I'm kind of all over the place. I moved back for work, for business. Um, as I said, I, I part own a clothing company so sometimes that requires me to be like on the ground doing work. Like that's kind of my day job now. JDH says, go to Stella Cold's June 23rd show instead so you can style with me, bro. Um, so I'll be going to Stella's show in Portland because um, that'll be the closest show to me. It's a good first watch to start a collection, a Seiko 5. Photo, Max sent this photo of Tom Hiddleston and it says, is there a double breasted jacket similar to this one in Loki? Any recommendations? So that jacket is a peacoat. So if you Google peacoat, you'll find jackets like that. That one's a brown one. Um, so yeah, it's a brown peacoat. That's what that is. Why isn't Karina in any of your stories or content anymore? You guys are perfect together. Um, so me and Karina are not dating anymore. So that's why we're not in each other's content anymore. Your all time favorite movie. You know, I probably have two. So like one is The Godfather, just on like a pure cinematic level. Like I think that movie is perfect. Like the lighting, scene for scene, the styling, the aesthetics, the dialogue, the story, the range of actors in it, their acting in it. I think it's brilliant. I think it's absolutely brilliant. But one of my comfort movies is Crazy Stupid Love with Steve Carell and Ryan Gosling. I think Emma Stone's in it. I can't remember the girl, the woman who plays the wife in it. But a uh, brilliant film and I love that. It's like a comfort film. It makes me laugh all the time. Nola Jazz, uh, also Nola, thank you. You, oh, I always see you pop up um, in my Instagram comments and in my stories and everything else like that. So I appreciate the continued support on all my channels. And um, trust me, it doesn't go on me. So I do recognize you guys when it's consistent. And um, when you were little, was there a specific thing you wanted to be when you grew up? Yeah, I wanted to be a professional footballer. It's all I dreamed of when I was a kid and I worked really, really hard and I sacrificed a lot and I lost a lot of friends and I never drank and I never smoked and I didn't do any of that stuff and I put everything I had into it. And unfortunately, I just wasn't good enough, but that's okay. I played at a pretty decent level, but not professionally, I wasn't good enough. Do you prefer pineapple pizza? Hey, bud. Do you want to say? help me get some orange juice? You want orange juice? Do you want to say hello to my vlog first? Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> you want orange juice? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. You need to help me up though. What are you doing? You need to pull, help me up. Go, pull. 
Boom. Is it Q&A time? Yeah, boom. Mm, bored. Can I help half of it? Oh. Okay, so you're going to answer some of these as well, right? <laughs> so, Winnie asks, do you prefer pineapple on pizza? Do you like pineapple on your pizza? Oh, no. No, I don't like pineapple on my pizza either. Florine and Dramer asks, what's your favourite perfume? You want me to do the videos, do you have a favourite one? What one? Um, like the bomb one. Spice bomb? Yeah. You like spice bomb? I think Italian leather by Memo Paris is probably mine at the moment. It changes. Ellie asks, bring me the Horizons album impressions. So do you want to, do you want to hear one of the songs and then you can tell me what you think? Um, okay, let's... Will this not get copyrighted? Uh, only if I play a small bit. You like it? Ethan approves. Bring the Horizon next gen. Ethan approves. Um, you know who Bring the Horizon are, aren't you? Huh? You know who Bring the Horizon are? They sing that other song that you like. Can you feel my... Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah. Giga Chad. Giga Chad. You know that from that meme? Yeah. Yeah, so Bring the Horizon next gen. Approved. Ronan O'Reilly. Full squad back tomorrow. Do you think you can nick a win? So he's talking about Man United versus Man City. That's on tomorrow. Who do you think is going to win? Man United or Man City? Oh, this is how I don't like either of them teams. So Ethan supports Liverpool. So he doesn't. Yeah. Who do you think is going to win though? Who do you think is better? Man City or Man United? Man United. You think? Erling Haaland and Kevin De Bruyne and Ederson and... Folding at the same time. Um, da, 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 let's find one that you can answer as well. Oh, here's one. Um, do you have any interest in anime or video games? I have interest in video games. Do you like video games? What's your favourite video game? I think uh, Rec Room's your favourite, isn't it? Rec Room and FC24. Rec Room and FC24. I don't really play video games that much, do I? I kind of have a, a shot of it when you're when you're Jacob plays, or, you, yeah. or your dad likes um, video games, doesn't he? Yeah. Your dad plays Call uh, of Duty. Your dad plays Call of Duty multiplayer. Um, like anime? Mm, kind of, kind of not. Kind of, kind of not. I don't, I don't really watch any. Um, I watched one episode of you like watched one. one. Yeah. yeah, it's My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia, there you go. I've never watched them. Oh, actually, I watched one. It was called Seraph of the End. And it was about vampires. Uh, Connor O'Farrell says, coming out with us for the FA Cup on Saturday. Maybe. Can I come? <laughs> no, because you'll have to go to a pub and you're not allowed in pubs. You're too young. And you support Liverpool. Why do you want to come and watch Man United play? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this is going to be the last one, right? Um. Gillies, Gillies, Gill, I hope that's how you say your name, says, what's more important, being happy or being right? Mm -hmm. You don't know? For me, being happy, I can admit when I'm wrong and I don't need to be right all the time. So for me, happy. being happy is, imp is very important. Okay, that is the end of the Q&A. Ethan, drink your orange juice. We thank Ethan for his little cameo and answering some questions. He's gone back to bed and it is now 11 p.m. I'll see you in the next one. I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Um, remember to like this video, hit that little thumbs up, uh, hit the bell thing if you want notifications when I upload. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and I'll see you in the next one. I love you guys. Goodbye. Ba 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 ba